The Church World Service Virtual Crop Walk raises funds to help the needs of impoverished people around the world. But it is also about raising awareness. We are accustomed to a life of abundance and convenience, but this is not the way life is for most of the world. When you are thirsty, you step over to the faucet or fountain. Yet millions of women and girls walk an average of three and a half miles a day to get water for their family's needs. The average American uses 176 gallons of water a day, while an average African family uses only five gallons. When you don't feel well, you go to the quick clinic or drive a short distance to the doctor's office. But if you live in Mozambique, your care option is pain reliever, band-aids, and a doctor far away in the capital city. In West Timor, you have herbs, local healers, and a doctor several islands away in Jakarta. The ratio of doctors to people in the United States is one doctor to every 420 people. But in sub-Saharan Africa, it is one to 36,000. When you are hungry, you eat anything at any place you desire. In the U.S., an average family of four pays $223 a week for groceries, yet half of the world earns a weekly income of $18 or less. It is a story of abundance and scarcity. But funds raised from crop hunger walks will dig wells close to people's homes, train female health workers in isolated communities, and establish farms and small businesses to provide food and better health. Only $18 provides Church World Service Garden starter kits in Nicaragua. $19 a month provides a month of literacy classes for a woman in Serbia. $22 a month provides 500 fingerling fish to community fisheries in Honduras. $88 a month provides for a health care giver in Haiti. $100 a month provides a dormitory room for a young girl in Kenya for three years. April 25th is the Kalamazoo Valley Virtual Crop Hunger Walk. And the PUCC Crop Walk team urges you to walk over to your checkbook or your computer and with glad and generous hearts send a check or click on the link to the team page and make a life-changing difference to people in Portage and around the world. Welcome to worship with Portage United Church of Christ in this third week of Easter. This is the Easter season, also known as the Great 50 Days, or as one minister called it, 50 Shades of Grace. As we enter this time of worship, let us open our hearts to the renewal of our minds and our spirits. And may we dare to let go and dance with renewed vigor as we allow resurrection hope to fill our bodies and our souls. with dreamers sing their song dare to dance their story sing out strong dare to dance with freedom your whole life long dare to dance again 
This week, we acknowledge that sometimes we are unsure about our steps in this world. For the disciples, even while in their joy at seeing Jesus after the resurrection, they were still disbelieving and wondering. We are reminded that even though we may not know our next steps, we can be sure they will come because we are God's beloved children. And so we have steps to follow, those of the resurrected Jesus. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their story, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. This is the call. Face this new day, even when you aren't sure. We lift up our heads to meet the day. Get ready for life, for life is all around. We fortify our hearts with compassion and action. If rain still lingers, we step out in hope anyway. For we are called to dance again. Let us pray. Holy One, justice seeker, lover of creation, you set this world into motion and gave it life. Turn us to you when our steps are not sure. Come and dance with us, engage with us as we seek you so that we can be risen with Christ and in Christ. Be with us now, we pray. Amen. Easter was a long and eventful day for the followers of Jesus. So long and eventful, in fact, that it is taking us three weeks to get through that story. On Easter Sunday, we heard the story of Mary Magdalene going to the tomb and finding it empty. Last week, we heard a story from the Gospel of John that took place when it was evening on that day. And now this week, on that same day, two of them were walking to Emmaus. And as it turns out, while they were walking, the resurrected Jesus was actually walking with them. 
They just didn't recognize him on this seven mile journey until they actually reached their destination and Jesus sat down and broke bread with them. Our story in Luke's Gospel picks up today after these disciples went rushing back to Jerusalem to fill in the others on what happened to them on that road to Emmaus. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Do you have anything to eat here? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. It was indeed a long, eventful, and frightening day for the followers of Jesus. And as they are sitting in a muddle of grief and fear and confoundment, things just seem to be getting worse and worse, more complex and more confusing because Jesus just keeps showing up in startling and unrecognizable ways. First, he shows up looking like a gardener not the teacher Mary was expecting. Then he magically appears through locked doors. And now today, he shows up looking like a ghost. Clearly, resurrection, at least initially, at first glance, clearly resurrection completely changes the appearance of Jesus. It renders him totally unrecognizable even to the people who knew him best, even to these people who traveled with him day in and day out in person for nearly three years. And if you stop to think about this for a moment, it really begins to get a little unsettling. Because if even these folks who knew Jesus so well can't recognize the body of Christ when it's right there in front of them, if even these people can't recognize a resurrection when it's there, how the heck are we supposed to do it nearly 20 centuries later. Now, it occurs to me that Jesus actually did have plenty of options to make himself recognizable, perceptible to these disciples in Luke's Gospel. He could have said to them, guys, look at my face, look at my eyes, my mouth, my nose, you recognize me. He could have said to them, listen to my voice. You know this voice. If this were modern times, he could whip out his photo ID. 
He could offer to show them his birth certificate or give them the last four digits of his social security number. But Jesus offers none of these ancient or modern methods of identification. He just says, look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Look at my hands and my feet. The resurrected Christ is recognized not by his face, not by his sincere eyes or the smile on his face or the sound of his voice, but by his hands and his feet. Now, let's just take a pause here a moment and remember the role played by his hands and his feet in his earthly ministry. Remember the things that he did and the places he went with his hands and his feet, revealing the forgiving and reconciling and expansive love of God. Remember those hands that healed, that reached out and touched a leper, that touched an unclean woman, the hands that cast out demons. Remember the hands that broke bread with thousands of his followers. The hands that broke bread with the likes of a tax collector called Zacchaeus and all kinds of other surly folks that gave him a bad reputation and made him really suspicious to the authorities. Remember the feet that were anointed by women by a sinful woman in Luke's gospel. Remember the feet that traveled across Israel and Samaria to share the good news of God's realm in our midst now on earth as it is in heaven. Remember the hands that washed the feet of the disciples just three days before the story we heard today and the hands that broke bread with the disciples on that same day, and now, once again, the hands that are breaking bread and joining the disciples in a fish dinner. No wonder Jesus is recognized, not by the look in his eyes or the smile on his face or the sound of his voice but by his hands and his feet. These are the parts of his body that so vividly brought to life the loving and reconciling work of God. And now, 20 centuries later, we are the body of Christ. I'm not talking about each of us individually on our own. I'm talking about we, the gathered body, the congregation. We are the body of Christ. And this is how the risen Christ is recognized in our midst. This is how the power of the resurrection and the hope and the promise of life transformed is made known to our neighbors by us saying, look at our hands, look at our feet, see what we are doing. As much as we want to gather together again and worship together in our sanctuary spaces, Luke's little ghost story here is a pretty pointed reminder. It is not 
our sincere eyes and our smiling faces, the sound of our laughter together, or the sounds of our voices raised. It is not the sound of my voice or Pastor Kyle's voice or the sounds of our choirs that make the risen Christ recognizable. These are the ways we experience the joy of fellowship and the presence of the divine, the presence of God in our lives. But it is by our hands and our feet, what we do with them and where we go with them, that the body of Christ is recognized by the world. It is by our hands and our feet, what we do with them and where we go with them, that we will be recognized as the body of Christ in and for the world. Christ commissions us to be witnesses to these things, to use our hands and our feet to make his body recognizable in the world. And like the disciples, we are probably going to often find ourselves in a whole muddle of joy and disbelieving and wondering just what our next steps should look like. And do we even dare to take those next steps? But no matter how uncertain our steps may be, the risen Christ is our dance partner. And he will faithfully and gracefully take the lead. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to move in the power of your spirit. Teach me to move in the light of your presence. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. For the beauty of the world in all its diversity, we give you thanks, O God. Let us pray together. May our gratitude to you fill our days. We need your healing, O Holy One, for our troubled planet, for our nation, for all who are struggling in body, mind, relationships, and spirit. We remember those who are suffering. Let us pray together. Come, O oh God, and restore our lives. Teach me to pray in the power of Easter, following Christ in a life resurrected. Teach me to act with compassion and justice. Teach me to dance with the beat of your heart. Be with each of us now. May the dance of your spirit ever call us to engage with you and with the needs around us. Lead us, O oh God, guide us, surround and fill us. Let us pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Teach me to love with your heart of compassion. 
Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to hope in the day of your coming. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Thank you for worshiping with us this week. I do hope you will join us again, anytime, any day. If you are new to worshiping with us online here with Portage United Church of Christ, and you would maybe like to know more about us and maybe even get on our email list, I invite you to go to our website and send us an email. We can add you to our weekly email list and every Monday you'll receive our email that will let you know what all is going on here in our PUCC community. And also it will inform you of events that we are holding online and a few even outdoors and in person. So please feel free to go ahead and send us an email. My friends, we are called to be resurrection people and to be the body of Christ, the visible, recognized body of Christ to our neighbors. We do this by being in ministry and mission here in our community in Portage. We cannot do this though without your support. So during the singing of our last hymn, I invite you to take some time and make your offering to our work here at Portage United Church of Christ. You can go on to our website and click the donate button. You can mail us a check. We have text to give, and you can also use the Give Plus app, which is available wherever you get your apps for your phones. We are grateful for any ways that you are able to support our ministry and our mission. We have heard the risen Christ speak peace and offer us hope with his very body. This gives us freedom to make confident steps in the world, even when we are kind of uncertain of what comes next. God is always speaking peace to us, and Jesus is our dance partner. So my friends, whatever way you dance, in body, mind, or spirit, may the loving God, the risen Christ, and the dancing spirit give you all that you need each and every day. And all the people said, Amen. Spirit, I have heard you calling Like a memory long grown dim Crying from creation's moment Seeking for from deep within I have heard you in my longing I have heard you in my pain Now I feel your life within me Feel you burning like a flame Now I see you all around me Now I hear my name. Now I speak the words you give me. Now I feed creation's flame. You are speaking through my longing. You are speaking through my pain. Now I feel your life within me, and I'll never be the same. Since you moved upon my waters, since you spoke and set me free, I have yearned for this communion, for 
for your fire inside of me. Now your love defines my longing. Now your love shines through my pain. Now we dance in endless union, singing out creation's name.